In this video, I'd like to talk about script templates. Script templates are a nice tool for organizing your work. They help you to be able to read your code later on when you open it and help other people be able to read your code as well. They provide a professional look and add consistency. And they're pretty easy to use. Basically what you do is every time you start a new program or a script, you just use a template to divide your code, organize your code. Uh, I would recommend dividing your code into three basic sections. Uh, a section for data, one for processing, and one for input-output or presentation. Now, The reason why you do this is because this is common in the industry, and as we'll see a little later on, um, we once we start thinking about this, we'll find that it actually gets used in all kinds of places out there in the programming world such as the data becomes your database. Uh, the processing may become like a web service you're using on the cloud. And the presentation would be the actual script or application you've made to interact with the user. So the concept of dividing data, processing, and presentation into three sections is going to be useful long term. And it's pretty easy. Basically, just make some comments. Then go through and add some code under the comments. So here I've gone through and added uh, a declaration of a couple of num uh, variables to hold some numbers. Then I've got a function that will pr uh, provide my processing. Then finally I have a presentation where I get input from the user and output to the user. So I'm picking up the input of the, a couple numbers and then outputting whatever the uh, function brings back when I try to use it. So, let's see, the code would look kind of like this. I can improve it later on by just going through and using the try catch block. So let's say I make a, oh, I make a variable for like, uh, how about Q for quotient. and return Q. And I'll use a try catch block. And if an error happens, I'll print out an error message. And then here's another aspect of try catch block. You can have it finally return a value. I'm going to do that. I probably want to have Q declared out here, so at least return something. Hmm, what would that be? Yeah, I'll tell you the truth. I'll make it so that Q returns some kind of string message here. So now I've organized my try catch block inside of the function. And there's a couple of problems with this and we'll handle them, we'll deal with them a little later on. One thing is that I've got variables that are declared inside of the function and ones that are declared outside. Another problem is that I'm actually putting um, presentation code inside of my processing layer. And these have to be addressed. For right now, we don't have to worry about that. But going forward, I'll, I'll talk about the issues in more detail. And we'll talk about different ways to handle it. For to get started, just something as simple as this is perfectly fine as an example. In addition to putting in the three layer, uh, three uh, parts or 
blocks of code here for data processing and presentation. Another common thing to do in scripts is to go through and add a little document header or preference to your scripts. And the, uh, the advantage of this, of course, is that later on when people come back and uh, work with your code, it will give them information about your code. So I would type in like, oh, I don't know, task.py is the title of the script. And my developer name would be myself, the date that I actually created the script, July 25th, 2015, a description, or a simple script. It'll be something that you would actually describe what you're trying to accomplish. And then if changes get made to it later on, either by you or somebody else, you would actually have a change log and you record what got changed. So for example, later on, I might put a try catch block and I would add in here that it was me. And when I don't want an extra comma in there if I can help it, so I'll do this. And what I did. Um, keeps, uh, you probably hear me say try accept, try catch interchangeably. Um, try catch is in probably more languages than try accept. Python uses try accept, try catch is a very common one. You see it in things like, uh, well, a lot of Microsoft stuff. So add a try accept uh, block to the function. <clears throat> only have one, but I think you get the idea. And then later on, as you modify the script, you'll have uh, a history of what was how the how the script changed over time, which is quite handy when you try to figure out what what is uh, the script intended for, maybe what went wrong, maybe what went right. And various other things. This, uh, this is really simple to do and it, um, it really can pay off big time long term at a company if everybody organizes their code accordingly. And as such, many project managers have the developers organize their code in this manner. We'll see more of this as we go forward in the class. Don't worry about it too much. Um, like the last two sections, uh, two videos, this is more of an overview um, that I just want you to see so that it kind of introduces you to the concepts you can think about them a bit and when we get to uh, looking at them in more detail as we go through the various different modules it should help your comprehension because it won't be the first time you've seen it for now uh, just think about this if you want to include this in your homework uh, a template like this, that's fine. It is definitely not mandatory at this point. Later on, it will be. Okay, that's it for now. Uh, next on the list, we're going to take a look at uh, what's in the chapters of the book. I'll see you there.